You summon extra power from deep down within yourself. Yeah. And my grandma's spirit stands behind me, and her hands are behind mine, guiding them as we cook this dish. I'm Iffy, here to play I Love You, Colonel Sanders, and this time, we're really gonna finish the bite. Will I truly love Colonel Sanders by the end of this video? Probably not. On a scale of one to 10, my chances of really nabbing the Colonel, I think are at a, at a one now. Number one, I'd be really surprised if I could figure out this game uh, in the last day. And number two, I'd be surprised if KFC let me have sex with their um, face of the company. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Words I never thought I would say. I do not like sleeping in a bed that's other than my own. We got lifts, we got Ubers, there's never a reason why I would ever stay at someone else's place. I'm going home. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the side of it. Ugh, again, a man making me food in a video game before I ever get made food by a man in real life. It's meticulous. It's just a chicken and biscuit. That ain't breakfast, bro. What you doing to me? When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. Is he proposing? So what would you say that we're the perfect match? Is he proposing? My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. All right. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Take him down a peg, flatter him. I'm a flatterer. I want to flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. I gotta take him down a peg. Here's what you need to know. Ooh, it's good, but my mom ain't better, dude. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. I freaking got to him. But with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Business partner, could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day left of school. After all, the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no man, except for student, Colonel Sanders, uh, sprinkles, anyone who just wants to show up late, it will wait for you. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? Because I had one heck of a night. You will not believe what happened to me after school. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Everybody here is shacking up with everybody. Since I'd been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends. Now that would be a sight. Since I'd been partnered up with Pop, he asked me to go out with him. Long story short, he took me to his favorite shush house. Things quickly spiraled out of control. You don't give Miriam time to tell her your story. No, I don't. This is enabling behavior. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. Kelsey is not coy. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection, wowzers. <laughs> Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. What? If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, we both agreed to go your separate ways. What? We did just have a, did we break up? When you arrived at school, you encountered your rivals in the quad. I had a rough morning. You know when you're having a rough morning and you see just your arch, Nemesis? You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop. I swear to God, I swear to God. They're gonna get all the might of me. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, Pop. It's great, I'll order you one up right away. <laughs> I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a tree. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Kelsey coming in. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There's a horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Matt. Suggest I picking on a defenseless horse. Oh, they're twisting my freaking words. You're twisting my words and I will not have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince in pain. Ah, doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. Van Van, you wish. I'll never give up. Ever! Colonel Sanders arrived just as it appears things are close to boiling over. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Matt. How's that hand feeling? Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. Aw, um, Colonel Sanders, sticking up for me, but also, you know, playing both ends of the field, okay. It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. Ooh, ooh, that's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Got her. Excuse me, Iffy. I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. All right, no need to get mad at me. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. All right, Ashley. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by the interaction with Ashley, you take the spell book you recovered yesterday and just start to flipping the pages. Wow, is that a book? It looks like bad news. Miriam, I thought we were over. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff at all. This game won't let me decide what I want. You can't be a vegetarian. 
You can't believe in magic. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it wasn't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. Let's pop that puppy open. I could use the spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, like not rooted in dark magic? Okay, fine, it is a little drastic, yes. But desperate times call for desperate measures. Honestly, I love witchcraft. Let's go in, Kelsey! <sighs> this is a big choice. I've got the memory erasing spell sitting right in front of me, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Cast the forbidden spell, or don't do it after all. This is it for me if I do this. <laughs> I know it. Ah, uh, no, nah, I'm not gonna do it. I really took a turn on that one. I wanna win one love game one time. I'm gonna cast the forbidden spell. I don't wanna live in a world with Colonel Sanders. You begin to recite the spell, but you stumble on the words. The only effect it seems to have is to make you forget what you were doing. Oh right, after looking at the page again, it all comes rushing back to you. Oh, they won't let me do it. I'm not gonna do it. You take your friend's advice and puts the book away. It's almost time for class. I'm trying again. Back into it. Oh, game, come on. Come on. Let it happen. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. Begin to read it, knowing that nothing can stop you now. The game has been pretty lenient on mistakes so far. This can't be it. This cannot be it for me. And if it is, I guess that's a risk I'm willing to take. Hold on to your butt. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow. I'm back at the beginning of the game. I lost. I didn't get to beat this game. Or maybe I'm the only one that did beat the game. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. What? Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Tarots! I told you never to come back here, Terrence. I will destroy you, Terrence. Ah! Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying all over his face. After Sprinkles is satisfied with his presence that has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in the hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Iffy, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see- But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Ugh. I told you to save it for after class. But I miss you! We went on one date, Pop, and how can you miss me when I'm right here? You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? I got her in trouble and now she's mad at me! I didn't just get in trouble, I got yelled at by Pop's mother who blames me for getting him banned from every museum we set foot in. Oh, so that's what you mean by shush house. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. And it meant so much to me that I made this for you! Pop leaves his, uh, creation behind and runs out of the room. Okay, it's jello with an egg in it, peas, carrots, pretzel arms, whipped cream and sprinkles on top. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. Disgusting. Nothing like a loud public breakout to cast a pall over the final day of school. Why are they breaking up? They went on one date. Well, that was unfortunate, but we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Is he in need of a pep talk? Oh, is it Miriam? Hey Miriam, are you okay? Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure. So you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Facts. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Oh, I love that. I love a female friendship. I'm back in the train. I should really review my menu for today. I'm gonna make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is gonna love it up. While you were pep talking near him, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decide to head to the arena early to practice a dish. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Kelsey's famous chicken pot pie. You're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven, but as soon as you do. Your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders and flower petals. Kelsey, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. Oh, same, oh my gosh! You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who was hungry, but that last time you let Colonel uh, Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. 
but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Ignore it like there was no sound at all. Fess up about your practice. I'm gonna fess up, because it'd be weird to just let it burn. Fess up about your practice, yes. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. It's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an ungodly specific man. You knew it was pot pie just from the smell? I mean, uh, that's not that impressive. Like, if it smells like pie and chicken, guess what? <laughs> it's probably a pot pie. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ha, huh, no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. If someone really talked like this to me, I'd be like kind of confused and weirded out. The moment of truth. Wow. It's even in the same dishware as the franchise. It's the best pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's tears in his eyes. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend Baster Blaster! Van Van flexes his pectoris as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roll! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Rude game. Give this girl some dimension. Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? It's a singularity, as it was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self destruct. Oh no, Clank. Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of our arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? I stare at the book and I throw it over my shoulder. It's time to do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm not here to cut corners. I'm here to find love and apparently make side dishes. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Aw, that's really sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. What the actual F? This isn't ratatouille. You can't just like freaking ruin it. Ugh, it's a secret ingredient. No, Miriam, I was lying to you. Where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloth that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It's a spork! It's his eye! Steve, the spork monster. Steve, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you conquered Steve, and I hate to battle. So I say you're doing pretty all right. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. You toss a serious stare at Steve, and he takes a hint. Yeah, man! I tell you later, good luck! Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. You summon extra power from deep down within yourself. Yeah! And my grandma's spirit stands behind me, and her hands are behind mine, guiding them as we cook this dish. You summon extra power from deep down within yourself, or give up and try. No, I'm gonna summon my extra power. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows to you. Super cook off! My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste bud has been preparing their entire lives for. Yes, Kelsey, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. No, ghost. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. Oh my god. Just, you interrupted my inspiring monologue, ghost. My heart is pure, my hand is steady, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery! You know that with this power, you can do anything, except turn back time, which would be super useful because you are powering up your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear Kelsey, I am worried, game! You may have suffered some setback, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decide that you've earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say I'm truly impressed. Really, are you? Because, like, we've been distracted, like, every five seconds. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help! What a Prince Charming. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been my thing. I follow my heart. 
What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. If we combine forces, we can form the perfect food you need. Time's up, students. The time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three days. But after days of hard work, the time has finally come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. I made tender udon noodles and savory soup. It is so cute. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny narudamaki? I spy a float in an itsy bitsy bowl. Sprinkle carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink little puppy tongue Dip in the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, super no. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Kelsey, for helping me to believe in my myself. Aww. Van Van, you're up. I made uni over smooth egg custard in an axe-hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? A bit much is also my brand. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch! My tongue. The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction. No, I can't eat this. I can't poke it in my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles would make it difficult to eat? Next student, and Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with a French meringue and connected by sugar glass. This looks freaking lit, yo. That actually doesn't sound bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Actually, I must say it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Yeah, Girl, obviously. This isn't the last you heard of me either, I hope. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. Oh, that kind of looks good. He examines it closely and tries sniffing, uh, eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing? And it completely blows me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. He's turned into Oprah. Sprinkles declare that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this? Now that the school year is complete, you mean three days, and everyone has graduated, the students return for the last assignment to get their groove on. Prom night, baby! The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. DJ Dog in the house! Oh, woo, woo! Whoa! Ah! Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were villains. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found love in her cooking. And you know, she's gonna do great. She looks adorable, too. I love this fit. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who would command such an entrance? It's Pop? What? He arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat is a crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Miriam, will you be my lady king? I'm sorry, Pop, but I'm not interested. Not now, at least. I've got so much to do with my life. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank! We plugged him back in. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this Earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? Now that I've learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. Whoa. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figure out who you are, Clank. Wow. 
proud of you, girl. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Ooh, regular shirt, dressed down, okay. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. Dude, he stole your recipes. I didn't get to the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. It just became an ad, again. The end? Question mark? No, it's not the end. Oh, okay. Kelsey, what are you doing sitting all alone? I, I wasn't aware I was. Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. Ashley, move out the way. I'm talking about Ashley. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities you would expect to find in such a lucky person? I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from a University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. I am taking notes. Ah, flirt, how to flirty banter. It's truly my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. Okay, I guess we'll stay on these rails, but just know my head cannon, it's me and Ashley. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off and I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Kelsey. Aw, how sweet, we'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his track. Work together? I think this is something I just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best, best path forward? Could it be you found your love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? What do you mean I failed to earn his respect? He straight up stole my grandmother's gravy and mashed potatoes recipe and my coleslaw. How are you gonna diss me when I don't even want you? I so, I cannot emphasize how much I don't want the Colonel at this point. Can you live with only half of him? What do you mean only half of him? Plenty of people don't work together in our relationships. I would argue, most of them! But that doesn't mean he shouldn't respect me. Oh, my dear Iffy, I'm sure you'll find your place eventually. Along the way, you'll have me by your side. What is, what is this? What, what is, whoa, we got dissed at the end. I feel like through my time of playing a bunch of dating sims, I've evolved as, as a person, and I think I deserve better than this. This is why you don't settle. Because every time you settle and you tell yourself like, oh, I'm gonna get, I, I guess I'll get with this person because they're the ones who really are into me. I'm not really into them. You date them and then they dump you, and then you mad because you're like, I didn't even want you. Now you sitting up here mad looking at the title screen. The last time I was in a KFC, it was actually a combination Taco Bell. If they do a Taco Bell dating, that's one of the best places for vegetarians, fast food wise. But Colonel wasn't in the freaking cards, dude.